On Sunday, we had some difficulties with our internet. We couldn't get online. So I'm going to read the message today because our message for this Sunday follows through from this one. I'm Pastor Linda from Bethel, Thetford, and we're a small church in the town of Thetford. Uh, Sunday was the first day that we had our new worship leader with us. She's uh, doing a wonderful job and the music is made all the difference in the world with having a piano player. It's amazing. And guitar player. Now our message today, or the message on Sunday, was on the feasts. Uh, and it's the feasts and festivals that have not been fulfilled. But I review the ones that have been fulfilled as well. Now there's three festivals that will be fulfilled when Jesus comes again. But there were four feasts or festivals that had been fulfilled. The first was Passover and then the Festival of Unleavened Bread. And you'll remember the first Passover was when the Israelites were freed from the bondage of slavery to the Egyptians. Each year they were instructed to celebrate Passover. And it tells us that in Exodus 12, verses 6 and 7. It says, Take special care of those, this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. And then we move on to the end of verse 11 where it says, This is the Lord's Passover. On that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses that you are staying. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you. Now, Passover 2021 started March 27th and 28th. Unleavened bread started March the 28th and went to April the 4th. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb for Passover, and that fulfilled this feast requirement. And the Lord's Supper was instituted, fulfilling the Unleavened Bread Festival as well. Matthew 26, verses 26 to 29 says, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And then we go on to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, You will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for you. Now you'll remember that yeast usually refers to sin. And sin, just a wee bit of it, just like a wee bit of yeast, will begin to bloom to grow. So that's why we need to stay away from it. But that's the reason for the unleavened bread. Now the next feast that was fulfilled is the Feast of First Fruits. And in 2021, this year, that was April the 3rd and 4th. First Fruits was to celebrate the first of the grain harvest, signifying that there was more to come, more to come from the bounty of the Lord. The Israelites began celebrating this festival after they went into the Promised Land. And it tells us that in Leviticus chapter 23, and it's verses 10 and 11 that I'm using. When you enter the land I am giving you, and you harvest your first crops, bring the priest a bundle of grain from the first cutting of your grain harvest. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest will lift it up before the Lord, so that it may be accepted on your behalf. Now, Resurrection Sunday, or Easter, Jesus rose from the dead, and that's the First Fruits Festival. And just as the first grain harvest gave promise for a greater harvest, Jesus' resurrection promises that he will also re resurrect all those who belong to him. So they will enter into the new promised land, that's the new Jerusalem. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 says, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. The next feast fulfilled was the Feast of Weeks and it celebrated the end of the wheat harvest. We all call it Pentecost, 
The Feast of Weeks was seven weeks plus the Sabbath. Leviticus chapter 23 again, verses 15 to 16. It says, From the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting on the t till the day after the seventh Sabbath, fifty days later. Then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. Now it's called Pentecost because it came to fifty days after the Sabbath of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And this year it was May the 23rd. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and filled Jesus' followers as he had promised would happen. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 tells us that on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues or fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Praise God Almighty! Each of these four fe festivals has been fulfilled by Jesus, and the other three will be fulfilled as well when he returns, and he is coming at just the right time. There are three unfulfilled feasts, the Feast of Trumpets, which calls all people to rest following the harvest. And this year, that was September 8th and 9th. And Leviticus, Leviticus 23, you'll find that all of the feasts are recorded in Leviticus 23. Now the Feast of Trumpets, it's uh, verse 24. It says, On the first day of the appointed month in early autumn, you are to observe a day of complete rest. It will be an official day for Holy Assembly a day commemorated with loud blasts of a trumpet. At the right time, that trumpet will blow when the souls are harvested. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from the graves. Then together with them, we who are all still alive and remain on the earth will be called up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. September 18, 19 of 2021, and the 19th was on Sunday, that's the Day of Atonement, also known as the holiest day of the year. It's not really a feast, but it is a day of preparation a day to spiritually prepare for the feast to come, a day of repentance. Again, Leviticus chapter 23, and it's verse 27. Be careful to celebrate the Day of Atonement on the tenth day of that same month, nine days after the Festival of Trumpets. You must observe it as an official day for Holy Assembly, a day to deny yourselves and present special gifts to the Lord. So that's a day for fasting and for praying, for preparing yourself for repentance and forgiveness, for atonement. When Jesus first came, he atoned for the sins of the world by dying on the cross, and all who believed the message of Christ and accepted it has their name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. When Jesus comes again, judgment comes as well. Revelation chapter 20, verses 10 to 15 says, then the devil, who had deceived them, was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before, the, before God's throne, and the books were open, including the Book of Life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. The seventh feast is the Feast of Shelter, or Tabernacles. And that starts on the 22nd. Here we are on the 22nd now, and it goes to the 29th. And we'll look at that on Sunday. And this week we'll actually have the uh, internet working and the sound working on the computer. 
but you can read all about it in Leviticus 23. Now, something I want you to remember is that when you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're washed in the blood. So what God sees when he looks at you is a reflection of Jesus. Your sin is gone. It's been washed away. And you make the choice to sin no more. But it is your choice. And you have to be obedient to the Lord. As you pray to him daily, ask him to search you and to remove anything that offends you and would separate you from him. And he will forgive you. We're going... We carried on and sang a few more songs that our new worship leader directed and like I had said it's um, it's just so wonderful and it's an answer to prayer to have her there with us and I pray that you'll join us this Sunday service starts at 11 o'clock and we look forward to seeing you there if not uh, in church then we look forward to knowing that you're online